Let me show you a quick thing here, because I think I'm going to... I'm going to shut it down here for the night. I'm a bit tired. Okay, so what we have here is a complete... Um, it's like an... I guess you could equate it to the animation uh, system, but it, it's not. So if I press play, the, the car moves along this track. And I can make anything move anywhere in any space um, with with these scripts. So there's, there's quite a bit of them. You can just add them and you can tell, well, no, we don't want it to wrap. Let's ping pong it. So it'll go to the end. Let's speed that up. And then it'll turn around and go back the other way. So I can create a scene, move an object around waypoints, smooth waypoints. There's don't have to be smooth. You can have a 3D version here. So this 3D version has uh so here's waypoints. So if I press play on this guy, you'll see him move between the waypoints. I think I can add waypoints dynamically. So if I insert a waypoint in the last place here, I can move it around. And it it uses those those waypoints. Let me speed them up so we can see it going between. So now it's on ping pong. So I can select this one. I think I can insert one there. So insert it before selected. So now that changes his route. So that's that's all can be done without scripts. So you can buy buy this thing here and use it and move stuff around. And here's the same the same thing but it uh, implements Bezier curves uh, uh, along the waypoints to give a smooth smooth movement and you know the curves are slightly manipulated you can manipulate the curves well to a certain extent you can go a little bit reverse and there's a limit to it because they start getting really out of hand if you're allowed to scale them beyond beyond certain limits that's the next asset I've been working on to get it out there's different stuff and I mean it's not just for for instance when I play this the scene there's a lot going on in here and so if you see the the material on the the base that material is being lurped between material one and material two by a component I've added on. So I add the component on. Let me pick up. Well, I can't even pick the components like that. They're all nested in a DLL. So if I go to scripts, value constraints, and I can pick all sorts of different things in here. And I have, um, well, these are examples, extras. So if I pick a material reference, it it needs a component so I just add a material component in here and it it goes through the material set it up and see if it is a material component and then I can pick a member if it works it seems like this one still needs a little bit of work hang on so let me give it a material Okay, so I can't add the material. Uh, I need a little bit of work, but this is, I can pick anything on here. So remove that. So if I want to change the position uh, of this object, I go into my scripts and I pick uh, references. So I have a vector three reference, vector two reference, I can pick integer references, but for this one, I, we can pick a vector three reference. 
so did it add it so okay it added it on so it's asking for a component we can just drop in our transform and the transform has you know pieces on it which it didn't even set our transform okay so the transform when you drop the transform in it uses reflection and grabs all the vector 3 stuff on the transform and then you can pick it you can set it and there she blows so I have a minimum and a maximum X if I hit play now it'll move my my piece from minimum between X and you know whatever I have settings here so that is pretty limited just by sending the vector 3 because you're this is real world positions so from the time I hit play it's it's not dynamic it's stuck to these these points that's why the that's why I implemented these uh, waypoints that way it, it uses the same 3d behavior of positioning but it adds them to a list so you can add more and more and more and more and more so that, that'll be the next uh, asset that I'll be putting out so you, without scripting you can move things around in a uh, decent fashion that kind of makes sense and they can do things like the turrets turn oh I didn't show that because there it's really a bunch of things on here like so for this one I have uh, I even have the rotator and let me just select it here where's this one let me use so this one's ideal. It's, it's made for a reference. So now I define where I want to, what angle I want to rotate on, and how far I want to rotate. And it will rotate this object to those those specifications. So if I change these angles, that still defines the rotation. Yeah, I'm rotating on this plane, but because my angles are a bit different, it's going to, you know, be a little bit skewed. And these lines trace out the path that each of my, what do you call it, each of my axes are going to take. And again, this is a component you can just drop onto anything. And you get all, all of these, these moves with it. So I'm going to take it back to zero. And if I press play... So it's going to loop between ping-ponging from that left to the right. And of course I can manipulate the this, this, this speed of this, how fast I want it to turn. We can slow that down. And this is a constant scale. It's a, a linear scale and we can manipulate the curve. So bounce and ease in. So ease in, ease out, and so on and so forth. So the, the, that's my next release, value constraints, which constrains values, <laughs> so you're able to manipulate them. Uh, 